Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Credible Crypto here on Twitter posting this, okay? We're in a new paradigm. When the market enters this golden window, you have to change your mindset and approach. And so guys, if this is your first bull run, you should probably be paying attention to, uh, you know, some of the people who have been in this market before, because now is when it gets really, really interesting. He goes on to say the early slash aggressive bird gets the worm, the one waiting for the deep dips, the over under deviations and generally more forgiving PA simply gets left behind. Now I know we're seeing XRP pumping 61.7 right now as of the time of this recording. And uh, we did see Bitcoin move up a little bit yesterday. So 61.7 for XRP, that is on the daily. Uh, and even just within the last hour, I've got uh, Bitcoin here on the hourly. You guys can see a big spike to the upside, making a new localized high for XRP. And guys, this has been the trend since uh, since about Saturday. So we have been seeing XRP really moving since Saturday. We've got Bitcoin here on the chart as well. Uh, Bitcoin did hit a new high, almost $36,000 per BTC. And uh, again, this is Bitcoin on the hourly as well. So I've got $35,967 per BTC, and that happened overnight, Wednesday night, November the 1st, uh, but we did see that retrace. Now Bitcoin trying to climb back up here, and uh, we're currently seeing a Bitcoin price of about 35300 So we've gotten over and above $35,000. Uh, the next step, here, let me just throw back on the daily to give you guys a sense of what uh, the overall trend is looking like. Uh, next step here, well, to get over and above all this stuff here. And I think uh, ultimately what we want uh, and what we're seeing now is, uh, I mean, getting there. I don't know how close we are to this though yet. What we really want though is $48,000. If we can get past that, that would be great. But, you know, I don't think we're going to see these prices until uh, closer to the halving date, which is April, 2024. I personally do still think that we are going to see some retracements in the meantime, uh, and I don't think that this trend is likely going to go much higher than this before we do see a retracement. Let me get rid of some of that. And uh, let me just show you guys other examples of where we did see this happening. So this is a great example here, and it didn't happen too long ago, back in June of this year. We did see Bitcoin pop. We did see, you know, a bit of activity here and then boom, a higher high before it came down and then started making lower lows and lower highs uh, and then came right back down into this zone here where, uh, you know, we were trading in and around 26,000. So we were at 31,000, then it came right back down to 26,000. I mean, a retracement, not out of the cards. I mean, we could go back to $30,000 per BTC, I guess. I mean, if we look at the Bitcoin monthly returns table historically, like I mentioned in a video I did last week, uh, we could see an average of, uh, I don't know, what was it? 77% return. However, the thing we do have to consider, guys, and uh, I think this is really important, is where we are actually at in the bull run. We are not uh, in a bull year yet. 2024, 25, those are going to be really important years for Bitcoin. So coming up, I think 2024, we're going to see some bigger moves, uh, similar to what we saw in 2020 over here, 40.32%. And look at what was surrounding those big moves. Lows down 17% in 2019, which is uh, what I think is the equivalent of where we are today for the crypto cycle. And 2018 was a bear year. So uh, similar to 2022, which was a bear year down 16.14%. I think we could see Bitcoin retracing, especially now that we've seen this uh, this initial pump in October. A retrace is very, very likely. I know, boo, boo, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, none of us want to hear that, but uh, you know, that is what I'm, uh, that's what I'm guessing. I, I mean, I hope I'm wrong. Check out Solana, guys. Solana has been pumping quite a bit too. And uh, you know, this is just one of those cryptocurrencies that uh, I don't talk about too much on this channel. Uh, I purchased some right in and around here. And I was kind of upset about this purchase when I purchased it because I did it literally before that black swan event before the FTX collapse back last November. Uh, but I'm happy I held on. I did average out at about $26.36. And now check that out. Solana has rebound. Uh, we're seeing a Solana price of about $43.41. Solana is going to be one of those coins that I highlight. Uh, that would be my legacy portfolio for my Patreon subscribers, guys. It is not included in the $10,000 plus portfolio. However, some of those coins in the $10,000 plus portfolio are still under what my initial costing in prices were. So again, I do think the market is going to retrace. I do think there is still time to get in on some of these coins to try to maximize our profits. I mean, obviously subscribing to the Patreon a few months ago, 
would have been better technically, but guys, I still do think there is opportunity, and I do still think uh, we do have more chances to cost average into some of these cryptocurrencies than I see uh, having, you know, 20x, 50x, maybe even 100x potential. So only $5 a month. I've kept it purposely affordable, so you're not breaking the bank here, and it's patreon.com slash working money channel. Again, it's only November 2nd, so a good time to join too. It's the beginning of the month. A lot of updates coming down the pike, and I'm going to be starting a live stream for my patrons. We got recent news, guys, from BitTrue that uh, due to technical difficulties, they have temporarily halted the XAH USDT spot trading pair for maintenance. All pending trading orders from users have been returned to their account. So if you guys were using the BitTrue exchange to trade uh, XAH tokens, here we go. We got it up here and uh, it looks as though uh, not a lot of activity here uh, on the BitTrue exchange. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, this wasn't updating in real time. So I had to refresh the page right now, trading just shy of 41 cents for XAH tokens. Some of you too have probably been wondering, uh, well, how much will I be able to get for my XAH token? I know yesterday I did highlight the story of uh, Bitru offering that option to lock up your XRP, but in the fine print, uh, they do say your XRP will be burnt. So there's that risk reward, right? How much will the Xao tokens B, what is the projected price target? Well, Flare Community has come out said, you know, just to put the XAH price predictions in check, until the one-to-one -one B2M ratio from XRP to XAH is reduced, the price of XAH will not sustain a higher price than XRP. This is at least uh, their theory here. If the price of XAH is higher, arbitragers will burn their XRP for XAH, sell XAH for more XRP, which essentially creates sell pressure and realigns the price of both assets. So a bit of a hack, a bit of a workaround there. No hate, just facts. As per the Exao white paper, we already know the ratio will indeed reduce over time. So guys, uh, here is uh, just a little screen grab, a chart here from the Exao white paper. Exao's B2M ratio schedule, the first 2 million ledgers is 1 to 1, then the next 28 million ledgers, 1 28 millionth less Exao XRP per ledger closed. After the 30 millionth ledger from launch, burn to mint disabled, no further minting is possible. So just food for thought, if you're burning XRP as an investment in XAH, just know that there is a hard cap on price until at least 2 million ledgers on Exao have closed. So uh, just to give you guys a, a sense of what uh, of how that math works and uh, what kind of ratio you would be getting between XRP and XAH tokens. So uh, thank you so much to the Flare community just for letting us in on that. And already, guys, there's scammers in the space trying to shill you fake XAH IOUs. This one from Ekasarepe here on Twitter. Stay cautious. There are XAH fake IOU issuers on the XRP ledger. Verify them before doing anything. Check their origin. If there are public statements from the exchange, check their origin. If there are public statements from the exchanges, okay? So uh, this one, courtesy of Alloy Networks originally. So guys, this is a fake issuer here. I will link this in the description of the video if you guys uh, have come across these guys. Uh, just one example of uh, a fake issuer shilling fake IOUs for XAH tokens. Boy, those hackers don't relent. When we do see more of these updates, we're obviously going to, uh, you know, get more scammers in the space. This is why, guys, keep your crypto safe. Make sure you keep it on a cold wallet storage solution. I plan on keeping my cryptocurrency on a Ledger Nano, which I do have an affiliate link in the description of the video. If you are interested in a cold wallet storage solution that has never failed me for over six years now, uh, that's just my opinion. Of course, you can use the affiliate if you want. You don't have to use it. Um, want to keep moving because there's quite a bit today. Actually, David Schwartz did come out saying Exao is a good avenue to test the hooks amendment amid the recent launch. So he says XRPL based sidechain. It's a good avenue to test the feasibility of smart contracts introduced by the hooks amendment. Notably, the XRP ledger ecosystem has recently welcomed a new member. As we know, Exao did launch yesterday or sorry, the uh, 31st. Uh, and, and it's a side chain that implements smart contracts. Apparently though, the hooks amendment has not been activated yet on the main net as it requires 80% support from the validators for two weeks. One of the reasons hooks has not gained enough support is the concern over its potential impact on the performance and security of the XRP ledger. Ripple has expressed its reservations about introducing smart contracts on the main net without proper testing and evaluation. And so David Schwartz did come out, basically says uh, he believes Exao is an excellent avenue to test hooks with real money on a side chain and prove that it won't ruin performance with time. Schwartz's comment came in response to questions and criticisms from the XRP community uh, who wondered why Ripple was not more supportive of hooks 
and whether they could veto it, according to Schwartz, Hooks is still in progress and it could be successful. So here's the uh, tweet from David Schwartz just from yesterday. He does say, uh, for those of you guys who do not think Ripple was not supportive enough, Hooks is still 100% on track and there's no reason to think it won't be successful. I think it's the opposite that would be a failure of decentralization. So David Schwartz uh, coming out and uh, stating his opinion on that. So I wanted to thank Wheezy for posting that, guys. Michael Branch bringing this to our attention too. Um, and maybe this is why the price of Solana is doing so well. I mean, we're getting more legal crypto news here. The SBF FTX trial is about to close. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. He spent his customers' money and he lied about it. Prosecutors present closing arguments against Sam Bankman Freed. So here it is in a nutshell. Uh, Sam Bankman Freed's fraud trial nears its conclusion. Federal prosecutors delivered forceful closing arguments accusing the FTX founder of lying and stealing from customers. The prosecution alleged this was because the defendant spent his customers' money and lied about it. Uh, it went to cover expenses, purchase properties, and make political donations. This was a pyramid of deceit to get money. Eventually, it collapsed, leaving countless victims in its wake. The crux of the matter, uh, the government argued, had nothing to do with the complexities or fundamentals of cryptocurrency and instead attributed Bankman Freed's behavior to simple fraud. Guys, here's a quote. $10 billion were missing and the defendant was responsible. You've heard about Bitcoin and blockchain, so-called Korean accounts. Here's the thing. This is not about complicated issues of cryptocurrency. It's about lies and stealing and greed. Exactly. That is, uh, you know, what I think everybody should be focusing on. The fact that greed, lying, deceit, this all occurs in every market, not just cryptocurrency. And so, you know, to paint all cryptos with one brush to say, you know, this is a, uh, a market where, uh, you know, it's full of negative people and the people involved just want to commit crime is so short-sighted, but I'm glad the prosecution has come out and said this. The statements uh, reflect arguments outlined in previous SBF trial coverage, noting uh, he faces charges of wire fraud, conspiracy, and campaign finance violations related to the implosion of the FTX exchange back in November of 2022. Boy, I can't believe it's already been a year ago. Uh, Sam Bankman fried has maintained he did not act with ill intent, instead making poor business decisions because, well, he didn't know any better. I mean, do you guys really believe this? I think he deserves his just desserts, personally. But then again, was he just a patsy for the powers that be? All things that make you go, hmm. So we're going to get a verdict soon. The prosecution uh, has aimed to convince jurors of criminal intent. Through its condemnatory closing statement, uh, Rusa from the prosecution asserted SBF intentionally defrauded FTX customers, stating this man, Samuel Bankman Freed, spent his customers' money and lied about it. So trial still ongoing, guys, but we're rounding the corner. Wanted to thank Michael for posting that. In other legal crypto news, guys, Eleanor Turret has mentioned this. SafeMoon and its executive team has been charged with fraud too. So don't know how many of you are following the SafeMoon DeFi cryptocurrency story. Uh, so SafeMoon, along with its creator, Kyle Nagy, as well as CEO John Caroni and CTO Thomas Smith, they've been charged by the SEC for perpetrating a massive fraudulent scheme through an unregistered sale of a crypto asset. So now SafeMoon is charged, guys. The team was charged by the SEC. SafeMoon promised to take the price of the token safely to the moon, but instead of delivering profits, they wiped out billions of market capitalization, withdrew crypto assets worth more than $200 million from the project, and misappropriated investor funds for personal use. So uh, we're still seeing, you know, bad actors in the market being prosecuted, and this is exactly what we want. The Terra Lunas of the space, right? The Sam Bankman Freeds of the space, the Safe Moons, uh, the BitConnects, you know, if you guys have been around long enough to remember that. These are the guys that uh, we want the SEC to target because they are actively committing fraud, not the ripples of the space, not the Coinbases. We need an environment that works uh, for Americans specifically because right now it is a bit of a crap show. And uh, so, you know, that needs to be rectified. So SafeMoon, uh, now the most recent company to be targeted by the SEC. And uh, let's see what the coin price is doing. SafeMoon to Tether. Boom. Ouch. Down 70% in the last uh, couple of days. Not looking good. I mean, usually it takes uh, an entire year of a bear market to uh, bring a coin down that much. And this coin went down about 70% uh, just within two days. This is the safe moon chart on the daily. You guys can see two daily candlesticks down 70% approximately. So for some coins, it's definitely looking up. And for others, guys, not so much. This is why I am diversifying. And this is what the subscribers to the Patreon have realized too. Diversifying in this market, but not picking coins at random. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm not looking at real world utility for these coins. I'm looking at coins that will make profit. 
So this is my trading strategy. I feel like I didn't uh, take enough profit in 2021, and this time I really want to do better. Ripple also did release uh, their recent market report, providing detailed updates on the SEC charges, guys. This one from XRP Crypto Wolf here on Twitter. Ripple's market report provides a detailed update on the dismissed SEC charges, offering insights into XRP Case's future trajectory. Uh, in a significant turn of events, Ripple, the renowned cryptocurrency payments company, released a new market report on November the 1st, shedding light on the current status of its legal battle with the SEC. They talk a little bit about uh, how back in October, uh, Brad and Chris were finally cleared with prejudice. Uh, what else does it say here? As the case moves forward, both parties are now entering the remedy stage, during which the court will determine appropriate remedies, if any, in light of the court's findings that certain institutional sales constitute sales of security. So they're still just mulling over the fine. Of course, the most recent report does point also to remarkable growth on the XRP Ledger's DEX trading volume. Another one here from XRP Crypto Wolf, giving us some more insight here uh, from Ripple's report. XRP Ledger's decentralized exchange has reported significant growth in the third quarter of 2023. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse recently drew attention to the performance of the platform, highlighting an impressive threefold increase in trading volume quarter over quarter. And guys, this growth was primarily between July the 12th, so right before the Ripple announcement, to August the 17th. And uh, I mean, if we look at the XRP chart here and uh, we just take a look at what those dates would be, that would be what period here? The 12th to August the 17th, which would be right there. So uh, this whole rigmarole, <laughs> when XRP price went up to about 95 cents and then came right back down to 43 cents before basing in the 50s. Obviously, though, now, guys, we are seeing uh, XRP price rebound. And, uh, you know, this is a good thing. 61.7 in a steady increase, not one of these God candles, as they call them. Uh, going straight up because that is just not sustainable. So we have seen, uh, you know, an increase in on-chain activity. The data from Ripple's quarter three 2021 report offers a detailed insight into the activities of the XRP ledger. The total trading volume of the DEX for quarter three stood at a substantial 218.6 million, a considerable jump from quarter two's 51.6 million. And guys, we're only going to see that increase as the bull run continues, as spec trading continues to heat up as well. Remember, we're only in 2023. 2024 is just around the corner. And 2024 was uh, the equivalent of 2020 in the last bull run. So if I were to put it here on the chart, just to kind of demonstrate, actually, let me bring up the total chart here to kind of demonstrate for you guys what 2020 brought for the market. So, um, you know, even though we did have the beer flu, we started 2020 off here. This was a black swan event. So if we kind of nix that out, the end of 2020 brought us to about here. So this was 2020, and this is uh, the equivalent of what I think 2024 will be. Spec traders will be getting excited, and so more price appreciation for XRP. And so guys, I was also floating this theory that uh, you know we might actually see real world utility coincide with this market. And so what is that going to mean for price? Well, I'm glad I happened to see this guys from Flip the Chain. This is Coin Club Quincy, if you guys haven't seen this guy before. He's done a few videos, he's an XDC developer, but done a few videos uh, discussing XRP also. And I'll put uh, one of the videos where I've highlighted Quincy in the past up here in the top right hand corner. These guys in this video interview, they're talking about the next bull cycle, moving from speculation to utility driven, Guys, what that's going to mean, more money coming into the crypto space, less fluctuations in price, but the price is going to go higher. Listen to this. 30 Central Bank currently working with Ripple. I'm not sure if you just answered this, so I'm not sure, but let me know. Do you think this is a speculation driven cycle or do you think utility is actually entering the market? So I think there's a little bit of both. Uh, I wish you could have two graphs, right? I wish you could have um, the hype cycle graph, like people showing the hype, and then the utility graph. And that would basically be taking the entirety of the market and taking out speculation. So let's say someone bought a token or exchanged a token. That that The reason they bought it, the institutional utility reason they bought it would be to run some sort of business process, whether it's moving capital, whether it's managing assets, whatever it may be. Um, we're seeing more of that, but I think we're still seeing the hype cycle outpace in uh, utility. So as you do see more people utilizing these blockchains for their businesses, for their applications, for their different processes, uh, we do see a lot more of it. Um, and you see you see a lot of different integrations all over the place. But at the same time, I do believe you see more of and it's going to be like a flipping, you know, like people always talk about the great flipping with Bitcoin and some other asset. There's going to be a, a flipping in the total amount of 
I guess you could say there's like two pools of liquidity. There's retail liquidity and you, you can call this institutional utility liquidity. There's going to be a flippening where the total amount of value going into crypto is more institutional than it is retail. Um, and that's just because the demand for the blockchains is increasing based off those processes that they're able to facilitate. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of agree with you, Quincy. I was, we were talking about this the other day on the shows. I still think this bull run is going to be more of a back of the bull run with the theme of moving towards a utility you know when you think of like back in 97 and 98 when we were kind of going when the internet was even getting talked about we were in that whole phase of it was very very speculative in 97 98 99 2000 2001 and then you saw the real world utility kind of start to kick in after 2001 2002 but it went flat for a long time before you know prices really started to skyrocket and I think you'll see a similar, there's no, I, I, I don't have any reason to believe why it would be different. I think, but there's, I totally agree. There's like two pools. There's a pool of spec of the money and there's a pool of utility, real world utility. And, you know, we had, um, I forgot which video apps played yesterday. It was really good. It was talking about, oh, it was, it was Brad Garlinghouse where he was talking about an app. I don't know if you had the video. He was talking about back in 97, you had, the, in, the institutional money kind of driving the market and then retailers came in later to drive it up. But in this market right now, at least a good four or 5% of people, retailers have kind of fronted this market. This market's been out there for a long time, but the institutions really haven't been into it and they're starting to flood in now. And like you said, that's going to be more of a utility type money play, I think. So I think it is going to be kind of a, it's going to be an interesting one because I wonder how many more bull runs we're really going to get where you get these major speculations. Once you start to move in utility, you don't really see those massive speculative pumps like we've seen in the past. So I, I, this may be, in my opinion, the last one we see that's like that. Literally exactly what I've been saying. This could be the last bull run we see. With that spec utility, guys, two pools of liquidity. We could be witnessing a flippening this time around where real value dollars take over the market and cryptocurrencies like XRP go to the moon. Maybe we're actually seeing a front run right now. XRP at 61.7. Let's see how high it goes this bull run. And if you guys are interested in seeing what I'm trading, you can follow me on Patreon, patreon.com slash working money channel. Let's maximize these profits, guys. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.